Hi everyone, welcome to our channel. My name is Nikki and together with my groupmates, Ayana, Kyla, Alana, Chris, and Bettina, we read a book about mathematics called The Nature's Number, written by Ian Stewart. And we're amazed by how math works around us, which is why we decided to tackle its second chapter called What Mathematics is For. So if you want to know more and you're interested, then just keep on watching. We've now established an uncontroversial idea that nature is full of patterns. Communing with nature does all of us good. It reminds us of what we are. Painting pictures and writing poems are a way for us to express our feelings. The entrepreneur's instinct is to exploit the natural world, while the engineer's instinct is to change it. While the mathematician's instinct is to structure that process of understanding by seeking generalities that cut across the obvious subdivisions. There is a little of these instincts in all of us, and there is both bad and good. But first, let's touch upon the role of mathematics in human culture. Before you buy something, you usually already have a clear idea of what you want to do with it. In everything you want to purchase, you still ask yourself where do you want to put it and whether the aesthetical appeal is worth the price. It is also the same in mathematics. Before you buy something, it is wise to decide what you want it for. So what do you want to get out of mathematics? Each of nature's patterns is a puzzle, nearly always a deep one. But mathematics is brilliant at helping us solve these puzzles. People interpret new discoveries in terms of what is important to them. But the message to mathematicians was quite different. It was that ellipses are really interesting curves. Mathematicians could take the geometric rules that lead to ellipses and modify them to see what other kinds of curves result in. Similar, when Isaac Newton made the epic discovery that the motion of an object is described by a mathematical notation between the forces that act on the body and the acceleration it experiences. Hey guys! Do you know that acceleration is a subtle concept? It is not a fundamental quantity such as length and mass. It is in fact a rate of change. It is a second-order rate of change, that is, a rate of change of a rate of change. The velocity of the body, the speed, which moves in a given direction, is a rate of change. It is the rate at which the body's distance, at some point, changes. However, I don't want to go into the measurements of acceleration. My point is that acceleration is a rate of change of a rate of change. You can work out distances using a tape measure, but it is way harder to work out a rate of change in a rate of change of distance. This is why it took humanity a long time with the genius Newton to discover the law of motion. If the pattern had been an obvious feature of distances, we would have been motion down a lot early in our history. However, both the mathematician and the physicist had the same intuition on how to deal with this problem. See, the interval of time you use should be as small as possible. Everything could be wonderful if you just use the interval of zero. Fortunately, that won't work. Both the distance traveled and the time elapsed will be zero. And the rate of change zero zero is totally meaningless. Yes, it's me, Kyla. It's my turn to tell you about what mathematics is for in calculus. So in order to handle questions about rates of change, Newton and the German mathematician Gottfried Leibniz invented a branch of mathematics called calculus. Change the face of the earth literally and metaphorically. But then again, the ideas sparked by this discovery were different for different people. The physicists then went off looking for other laws of nature that could explain the natural phenomena in terms of rates of change. They found them in a bucket full of heat, light, sound, fluid dynamics, elasticity, electricity, and lastly, magnetism. So the story of the calculus brings out two of the main things that mathematics is for. First, it provides tools to let scientists calculate what nature is doing. Second, it provides new questions for mathematicians to sort out to their own satisfaction. These are the external and internal aspects of mathematics, often referred to as applied and pure mathematics. The methods of the calculus seem to be working, 
Why does it matter why they work? Engineers who design a bridge have the right to use the standard mathematical methods, even if they don't know the detailed and obscure reasoning that justifies these methods. For example, I would feel odd crossing a bridge if I knew that no one understood what those tactics are justified on. On the cultural level, it pays off to have some people who are concerned about these methods and are trying to figure out how these methods work. And that is one of the jobs of the mathematicians. They enjoy it and the rest of the humanity benefits from it. In the short term, it made a very little difference whether the mathematicians were satisfied about the logical soundness of calculus. But in the long run, mathematicians discover new ideas by learning internal difficulties which turn out to be very useful to the outside world. It's me, Alana, and now it's my turn to tell you why mathematics is useful. Don't you know, one of the strangest features of the relationship between mathematics and of the real world, but also one of the strongest one, is that good mathematics, whatever the source may be, eventually turns out to be useful. There are all sorts of theories why this should be so. Ranging from the structure of the human mind up to the idea that the universe is somehow built in little bits of mathematics. The answer is quite simple. Mathematics is the science of pattern, and nature exploits just about every pattern that there is. Whatever the reasons, mathematics is definitely a useful way to think about nature. Maybe you're wondering, what do we want mathematics to tell us about the patterns that we observe? Well, there are many answers. We want to understand how they happen and why they happen, which is different. To organize the underlying patterns and regularities in the most satisfying way, to predict how nature will behave, or to even control nature for our own ends, and to make practical use of what we have learned about our world. Mathematics helps us do all of these things, and often it is indispensable. Let us use the spiral form of a snail shell as an example. In here, mathematics lets us do the molecular bookkeeping that makes sense of the different chemical reactions that goes on. It describes the atomic structure of the molecules used in the shell, as well as the strength and inflexibility of the shell's material, as compared to the weakness and pliability of the snail's body. As what Kyla had mentioned, mathematics plays a role in creating structures like the bridge and many more of what we see today. To sum it up, Mathematics can be used to rate the resulting geometry of the different variables such as growth rate, eccentricity of growth, and more importantly, creating basic structures. Another function of mathematics is prediction. By understanding the different motions of heavenly bodies, Astronomers could be able to predict a lunar and solar eclipse and the return of comets. Astronomers know where to point their telescopes at to find asteroids that had passed behind the sun out of observation. Because the tides are controlled mainly by the position of the sun and the moon relative to the Earth, they could predict tides many years ahead. The chief complaining factor in making such predictions is not astronomy. It is the shape of the continents and the profile of ocean depths which can delay or advance the high tide. However, they stay pretty much the same from one century to the next, so that once their effects have been understood, it is a routine task to compensate for them. In contrast, it is much harder to predict the weather. We know just as much about the mathematics of weather as we do about the mathematics of tides, but weather has an inherent unpredictability. Despite this, Meteorologists could make effective short-term predictions about weather patterns for, say, three or four days in advance. The unpredictability of weather, however, has nothing to do with the randomness of topic that we will take up in Chapter 8 when we discuss the concepts of chaos. The role of mathematics goes beyond mere prediction. Once you understand how a system works, you don't have to remain as a passive observer. You can attempt to control the system to make it do what you want, it pays not to be too ambitious, like weather control for example, is in its infancy that we can't make it rain with any great success, even when there's a presence of rain clouds. 
Examples of control system range from the thermostat on a boiler to the medieval practice of coppicing woodland. Without a sophisticated mathematical control system, the space shuttle would fly like a brick it is. This is due to the fact that no human pilot could quickly correct its inherent instabilities. Hi guys, so the concept explained to you by my groupmates brings us to the most bottom line aspect of mathematics, its practical applications, and how mathematics earn its keeps. Our world rests on mathematical foundations, and it is unavoidably embedded in our global culture. The only reason why we don't usually realize just how strongly it affected our lives is that because for sensible reason, it was kept as far as possible behind the scenes. For example, when you go to the travel agency and book a vacation ticket, you don't need to understand what mathematical theories used to possibly design computers and telephone lines. Another one is when you watch a television program, you don't need to understand the three-dimensional geometry used to produce special effects on screen. But somebody had to understand all of these things in the past, otherwise airlines, televisions, and spacecraft wouldn't have been invented. And somebody has to understand all of these things now too, otherwise they won't continue to function. We should not expect mathematics to give an immediate dollars and cents payoff. The transfer of a mathematical idea into something that can be made into a factory or used in a home generally takes time, lots of time, and a century is not unusual. If mathematics including everything that rests on it were suddenly to be removed in our world, human society would collapse in an instant. And if mathematics were to be frozen and stop progressing, our civilization would start to go backwards. In a nutshell, mathematics is the key to opportunity. It is no longer just the language of science. It is now contributing to the fundamental and direct ways of business, finance, and defense. For students, it opened doors to careers. For citizens, it enabled informed decisions. For nations, it provided knowledge to compete in a technological community. That is why, to participate fully in the world of the future, the world must tap to the power of mathematics.